Welcome, Wright Riders. Thank you so much for joining me on today's live stream. Sorry we're a little late. YouTube is giving me a little bit of a, a headache. Um, but again, welcome, Wright Riders. Thank you for joining me. If you're catching us on the live stream, I'm glad you're here. If you're catching us on the replay, sorry we missed you. Make sure that you subscribe and hit your little bell to get notified so you know the next time I'll be live. Self-publishing puzzle books is becoming more and more topical in the past few months. There are quite a few questions and misconceptions that I've seen when it comes to how to make money with puzzle books. So today, I'm gonna to try to answer as many of those questions as I can, as well as give some activity book secrets. But first, let's check out the chat and see who's here. Wow, looks like a whole bunch of people in here. Jazzy and Katie, hello, thank you for being here. Um, Aomi999, hello. Weatherly Morgan, howdy. So glad to see everybody here. Um, I am so sorry to hear about your dad. Um, but uh, but hopefully I'll, I'll try to give you some positive things to, to, uh, to focus on. Okay, so I, I got an email um, from a, a viewer and shout out to Adamer Ablan. I apologize if I butchered your name, um, but her questions that she had were so relevant that I felt I had to do a live about it. In fact, I actually, if you watched last week's live, I actually had a whole different topic planned for today. But when I got these questions, um, and I've been seeing a lot of things on some of the YouTube um, some of the YouTube channels, as well as some of the Facebook groups that I'm in, that I just felt the need that we had to focus on puzzle books and activity books. So first, what are puzzle books? What are activity books? Um, a, a lot of times they can interchange, but basically puzzle books, think of anything that's a brain teaser. So crosswords, word searches, mazes, things like that, that are, like I said, they that they make you think. They, they're brain teasers. Um, activity books, while they can include those things, can also include things like coloring pages, uh, tic-tac-toe, hangman, those kind of games. So it's a little bit less of a brain teaser, but there's still activities that you do. And they all fall under the category of low content or no content books, depending on the amount of writing in there. So for example, a maze or a coloring book or tic-tac-toe, they, those would be more no content as opposed to like word cro uh, crosswords, word searches, those would be more of a low content book. So that that's basically what they are. And like I said, over the last few months, and especially the last few weeks, they're really starting to, to become hot as far as creating them. They've always been hot when it comes to buying them, but a lot of people are really getting into this, making their own puzzle books. So one of the main questions she asked was the based on the economics and the question she had while it pertains to puzzle books and activity books really just goes for anything when it comes to self-publishing on print on demand platforms um, and that is basically you know how can how big of a book do, do I need to make and still make a profit and unfortunately there's really not a a fast a set and fast answer to that because it all depends on your niche so just like I've suggested numerous times with you know when you find a niche you go in check out the first 10 or 20 that are in that particular niche and look for whatever type of puzzle book you want to do or you can just look for puzzle books and see how many pages the average page length is and how much they typically charge for it that way you know about where you need to be both with your price as well as with the actual content. Now, once you do that, there actually is, and I, I know there's different print on demand platforms and I use multiple ones, but most of us, if not all of us that are on this channel are familiar with KDP. So when it comes to pricing, I'm just gonna go over what KDP has. And this is on their site um, and it's, if you're doing a black and white interior with 24 to 108 pages, then the print cost is gonna be $2.15. Uh, if you do more than 108 pages, so if you do like 110 
or more, then it ends up being an 85 cent per book base price and then 0.012 cents per page. So you can just do the math and figure out what your book is going to cost depending on the number of pages you plan on putting in there. And then you can figure out if, you know, what price point you need to be at and you can figure out the profit from there. Now, if you plan on doing a color interior, then if it's 24 to 40 pages, that's $3.65 per, uh, for, the, for the print costs. If you do more than 40 pages, so if you do 42 pages or more, then it's a base price of 85 cents and then seven cents per page. And again, that's for color. Um, don't worry, I, I know I just went through that really fast. I didn't expect you to write it all down. If you want to look at that page on KDP, you can just go to kwheelerbooks.com slash cost, and it'll bring you right to the KDP page for the that shows the uh, print calculations. Um, another question she had was if she wanted, you know, a couple pages to have color, but the rest are going to be black and white. And the way all of the print-on-demand sites I've used runs is you basically create, you select how you want your interior to be, whether it's black and white or color, and that goes for the entire book. So it, it's not page by page. So even if you have the entire book in black and white and then you've got one colored image in there, if you want it to be in color, then the entire book is gonna be in color and the color pricing is what you need to go by. So again, if you want to check out that cost list, you can just go to kwheelerbooks.com slash cost. Um, so this is probably the biggest question that I've gotten when it comes to these puzzle books. And that is, do I need a puzzle generating software? Um, no. <laughs> the short answer is no, you absolutely do not need it. I have created without using any kind of saw, any kind of generator, I've created word searches, crosswords, Sudoku, and even mazes using systems like, or software like PowerPoint. So you absolutely do not need any kind of generating software. That said, obviously, just like with most things in the world, you know, a software is going to make things quicker. It's going to make things easier on you. Um, I've tried probably about three or four different puzzle generating software. There is one that I really like and I use it myself. But again, you don't need in any way, shape or form to purchase one of these. In fact, I actually suggest that if you have the time, try to make at least one of these puzzles yourself. And by doing that, you'll really get to appreciate how much of a time saver those puzzle, the puzzle generator is. Um, now, if you're wondering what generator I use. I use, it's called Puzzle Mastery. Um, I, I use it, I'm not going to do an, a review on it right now, but basically I use it for multiple reasons. I, I like it because it's fairly intuitive. It's, you know, quick and easy, so it doesn't take a lot of time to learn it. And it's really reasonably, reasonably priced. Um, I, I want to say that the, the starting level is like 27 bucks. And I like that it's tiered because this way, when you go into it, you don't, you know, you don't have to spend a ton of money and find out you don't enjoy it. So, you know, if it is something that you're interested in, you can go to kwheelerbooks.com slash puzzles with an S at the end, puzzles, and you can check it out. Yes, it is an affiliate link. So, you know, I, I will, I will get a small uh, finder's fee, if you will, but you probably know me well enough to know that I will not suggest anything to you that I have not personally used and that I believe in. And so one thing I really like about this as well is that the guy that created it, Ken, he's actually a programmer like me. He's been a programmer for 20 years. So when there is, you know, a glitch or whatever, he can go in and do it himself and make the changes instead of waiting for somebody overseas to get to it. So again, kwheelerbooks.com slash puzzles. If you want to check that out um, now I know in on the uh, on the title and we talked about earlier is that we're looking for some activity book and puzzle book secrets and 
Absolutely. I'm going to cover that, but let me just check out the chat and see how things are going. Let's see. Oh, a lot more people came in the house. Let's see. And if you have any questions, make sure that you drop it in here. If I miss it, you know, go put it in again. Um, lovely people in the house. Ray, Ray Morocco in the house. Hey, buddy. Um, Paul Burgess. Jennifer Church. First time catching one of my lives. I am so glad that you're here. If anybody else, this is your first time catching a live, put hashtag live or hashtag new. And uh, I'm really interested in, in seeing how many people are, are new to this. Because I'll be honest, I've actually been debating on whether I want to continue doing these lives if they're helpful. Um, but uh, Or if you guys want me to go back to doing the pre-recorded. Or maybe I'll mix and match it. Uh, matter of fact, I actually have a question in the community tab here on the channel that asks uh, what type of in information are you looking to see for the channel so if there's more of one thing or another that you're interested in make sure that you respond to that um, Kelly publish in the house so glad to see you Weatherly Morgan yeah there are definitely a lot of software popping up um, one code club Another first time ever on the live. Thank you so much. Darren Wiggins, what's up? Rachel G. Well, look at all these news. Awesome. Awesome to see. All right. Sarah Dieger, glad to see you guys all here. Now, without further ado, I'm going to go through a few of my uh, activity book and puzzle book suggestions and secrets, if you will. Um, I'm going to go through it fairly quickly. But if there's anything that you can think of that I don't mention, put that in the chat. If you're watching this on the replay, throw it in the comments. This way we can all learn from each other. You know, don't look at each other as competitors. We're all trying to, there's plenty of money to go around. There's plenty of people on Amazon and, and off Amazon to, to uh, help us all without having to, um, you know, try to fight each other. So we're all in this together. That was a big, long way to say we're all in this together. All right, number one, try books with both the same interior as well as books with mix and matched interiors. Uh, example that I have is coloring books. Now, when my kids were younger and I would buy coloring books for them, it drove me nuts that I could not find a coloring book that only had coloring pages in it. It seemed that all the coloring books were activity books. So there's some coloring pages and then there's some dot to dots or whatever. And that's great if that's the kind of book you're looking for. But I wasn't. I was looking for a, books that had all coloring pages. And, you know, I, I couldn't find one. So, again, there's all different types of people out there and everybody has different preferences. So try to mix and match. So if you're doing one with uh, crosswords, you know, have one that's all crossword puzzles. And then maybe do one that's crossword puzzles mixed with word searches, mixed with... You know, tic-tac-toe boards, whatever you want to do. Just mix and match them. Maybe throw them in some Sudoku books or some Sudoku pages inside the book. So mix and match. Uh, but don't just do one or the other. Because, again, the your readers out there and the consumers may like one or the other. So if you have both, you got a twice as better, twice as much chance of making sales. Um, next, just like with we say with basically anything when it comes to self-publishing, whether you're writing a book or you're doing no content interior, low content interior, puzzle books, activity books, you need to niche it down. You want to niche it down at, as, as much as you can. You know, when you do your niche research, try to find an, an area that you're comfortable with, that you're familiar with, and that is niche down enough to where your competition is smaller. Next, series, when it comes to activity books and puzzle books, series works so well. When they, you know, it, it's not like a normal, like a line journal, where they can go and buy that exact same line journal when they're done using it. We, when it comes to puzzle books, they don't want to buy that exact same one because they've already done it. So to have a series where they have already bought one of your books, it connects them to all the others. So when, especially when it comes to puzzle books and activity books, 
series is extremely, extremely helpful, not only for that, but also with searchability because it gives you a little bit more uh, search parameters. Um, create multiple complexities. So don't, if you're doing a Sudoku puzzle, don't just do easy Sudoku or hard or very hard. You know, have a book for each different level. You know, same thing when it comes to word finds. You know, the, the, the size of the words, the length of the words can change the complexity of the book itself. So have, again, an entire book of just easy crosswords, but then also have a book that's a mix and match of easy crosswords, medium, hard, maybe even very hard. So again, you're, the people out there are so variant that you need to make sure that you try to appease as many of them as possible. So if you only have a book on easy crosswords and I'm pretty good at crosswords, I'm not going to buy that book because I don't need it. I, I'm beyond that. So again, create books that are in multiple complexities for that particular puzzle. And this is the last one I have, and I, I call this a bonus tip because I've absolutely heard nobody talk about this, and it kind of ties into the last one about the different, uh, having different complexity levels, and that is making a parent-child version of the book. So have a more complex version for the parent, maybe six by nine size, and then have a smaller or a less complex version, but maybe eight and a half by 11 or eight by 10 for the child. That way, you know, a lot of times kids, they, they want to be like their parents. They want to do what their parents are doing. So instead of just having one sale, you can actually have two sales or, or, multi, or maybe three or four, depending on how many kids they have. And so, and it's the same interior or the same cover you would do, you would just label one, you know, parent's version or kid's version or however you want to word it. Um, and that's a niche in and, in and of itself. So whatever niche you're in, then you're adding on top of that by making a parent-child version of it. So um, those were, like I said, those were just some of the ideas I had, uh, some of the little secrets, if you will, for puzzle books. I see the chat going crazy on the left-hand side. Um, but... Uh, but, um, yeah, these are just <clears throat> some of the ideas I had for um, activity books and puzzle books, ways to make them different, uh, ways that you can better your chance of having success with self-publishing puzzle books and activity books. Um, I'm going to get a quick drink. Now let's check out the chat because it's been blowing up. Uh, let's see. See if anybody else is in the house. It's not sin artist. Hey Kelly, nice weather lately. Uh, Weatherly Morgan, bring it on. Craig Jarvis, hashtag new. Um, it you know Kelly, I, I know you're in Columbus, um, Ohio. It is absolutely beautiful out right now in Missouri. Um, it's not super hot. There's a nice cool breeze. So. Um, extremely extremely excited about the weather um, let's see going to the state fair that's awesome let's see lady some sars in the house jane selection or jan selections in the house uh, let's see looks like a bunch of people talking back and forth i love the camaraderie between the uh, the viewers that's great uh, let's see if we have if you have any questions um, just make sure you put them in here. I'm going to try to catch. If I missed it, if I glanced over, because I know a lot of you are talking to each other. Um, if I glanced over, just throw it in there again. Um, yes, Kevin McGuire, thank you so much for being here. I know it's, um, it, it's late over in, uh, over in, um, uh, the Ukraine. I just drew a blank, but yes, you're in the Ukraine. Um, hello from Orlando. Patricia Larson. Um, I'm actually from Daytona, so not too far away from you. Um, it's, it's exciting to, uh, to, to see. I'm assuming that from what I checked that the weather in Florida is just about the same as it is here in Missouri right now. Um, let's see. And it's actually supposed to be nice weather here for probably the next week, and then it goes back up 
to being really hot. Uh, let's see. I don't see any questions. Um, yeah, 72 degrees. Oh, Kevin, I was wrong. Okay, it's only 721. Okay, so it's still early. All right, well, I'm, well I still appreciate you being here. Um, I know you've been doing puzzle books and been killing it on it. Like I said, guys, when you know you don't need a software for it. Um, in fact, if you have time, I suggest doing it yourself, um, at least to begin with. That way, you better appreciate what the software can do. Um, if you'd like to see me do some videos where I show how to create some of these, um, let me know in the comments. I can do that. Um, I already have some ideas on um, on some future videos for more interiors, uh, both low content, no content. But if this is something you guys would be interested in, let me know in the comments. And if there's enough interest, I will do one of those as well. But but yes, I I now use software, um, but it, it's not necessary. Um, it just it's a time saver. It, it basically comes down to you know a lot of people will say you know there's only so many hours in a day, but you can always make more money. If that's you, if that's your mentality, then yeah, you can check out the software. Like I said, the one I use is Puzzle Mastery. You can go to kwheelerbooks.com slash puzzles to check that out. Um, but it, it's not it's not 100% necessary. Because like I said, I've even done mazes and, and stuff like that. Tic-tac-toe boards, uh, hangman, all that. Uh, as well as word searches, Sudoku, all using PowerPoint. Um, also, another thing that somebody had brought up is you, you can hire someone off like Fiverr to do them for you as well. So again, if you want to spend a little bit of money, but... You know, like I said, the, the, the mastery, the puzzle mastery software, it starts off at $27. So um, I don't know how many gigs you would get off Fiverr before you're spending more than that, but you can absolutely look into that as well. So again, it's not necessary to have uh, a puzzle generator. It's, it just saves time. And with me being, you know, doing this part-time and have a full-time job, you know, I, when I found one that I actually liked and that I thought was easy to use and fairly reasonably priced, it, you know, I jumped on it just to save myself time. Plus, of course, you know, I'm doing a YouTube channel. Okay, let's see. Question. Do you have any tips for for puzzles to prepare for Q4? Um, puzzles for Q4. You know, I, I, it's funny you ask this, Kelly, because I actually... Um, I'm a lot like you where I don't try to do a lot of specific puzzles for like the holidays or anything like that. I try to be more evergreen. Um, Q4, basically anything sells. But just think of what, you know, the, you and the people you love, what you would buy or receive as a present. You know, what kind of books. So, I mean, if you want to do something that's holiday related, you know, especially with the puzzles, I mean, you can have, you know, a reindeer going from their food to, you know, to Santa. And, you know, as a starting point and an ending point. Um, you know, the the possibilities really are endless when it comes to the holidays. I just don't do a lot of those because after the holidays, the sales tend to fall. Uh, so I try to do something that's more universal and more evergreen. But, you know, think of, think of what you enjoy. And, you know, like I said, what you would buy somebody else as a present, you know, even if, if you wouldn't buy it as a book, you can think of the book variation of it. So like um, my dad's really into cars. So I can do an entire puzzle book themed around cars. You know, you can do uh, with word searches that would, you know, the words in there relate to cars. You can have a crossword where the questions all pertain to maybe different car, different brands of cars, um, some car facts, depending on, and again, doing different levels of complexity. So easy one, medium, and hard. Um, it, the other thing, and, and I meant to mention this before, that the real question is, is should I do, should I start doing puzzle books? And the truth is, is, it's the same thing I would say about no content, low content, writing, whatever. If it's something you think you would enjoy, give it a shot, you know? Um, if you're not sure, like I said, I would start off with making them yourself. You know, just do, a 40 page depending on what your niche uh, is looking for you know I wouldn't spend money on a software if this is something you just want to try out once or twice because it may not it may not pay off until you know three or four books down the road 
But if it's something you think you'd enjoy, life is too short to do something that you're, you're not enjoying. So if you think that creating puzzles and activity books and stuff like that would be fun, you know, then absolutely give it a shot. Uh, you know, and even if you use a generator, you can still create the, the puzzle covers. And one thing that I like to put on the back of my puzzle covers is screenshots of the actual puzzles. And obviously not all of them, but especially if you have different types of puzzles in your book, include that in the back cover or maybe even on your front cover so people can see, uh, get a little glimpse into what they can expect on the interior. And again, one more way to make your book stand out. But that's a good, that's a good question. Um, as far as, like I said, any other ideas for Q4, um, I would say if this is something you enjoy, the only other puzzle preparation I would suggest is start knocking some out, you know? Again, making sure that they're quality. Don't just throw it, and this is, this is one of the times when, like I said, you don't, you can't use the same interior or you shouldn't use the same interior for multiple books. I mean, maybe one or two, but um, one or two interiors, not one or two books. Um, but, you know, you want to make sure that each book is unique so that way, if they, especially if you put it in a series, this way they can buy all of your books if they like one of them, as opposed to, because you'll get, you'll, it'll be real fast for you to get negative reviews if they've purchased one of your books and they purchase, second, purchase the second one and it's got the same interior. It'll be a quick one star review uh, if, that you've ever seen in your life. So definitely I would, you know, different interiors for each book um, and to get ready for Q4, just focus on one niche, maybe two, and and work on that. One thing that I have been guilty of is spreading myself out too thin, and you know then I don't really end up getting a whole lot done because I'm jumping from one topic to another. So focus on what what you are really interested in, and just start working on it. And it I'm, you'll be surprised at what'll sell during Q4. I mean, I've got things that, um, that I mean, the, the first book that I ever created is sells like crazy during Q4. And it was definitely not my best quality because I just started out. And as you continue in this industry, just like with anything else that you do, if you do it long enough, you're going to get better and better. And so it's amazing how many sales I get, especially during fourth quarter, for these what I would consider less than stellar books that I've created early on in my career. Let's see. How long does it generally take me to put together a puzzle book from start to finish? Any tips for speeding that process up? Good question, Weatherly. Um, it, I mean, it depends. It depends on whether I'm using a generator or if I'm using you know, if I'm making all the interiors myself. Obviously, if I'm making the interiors myself, it's gonna take me quite a bit longer. Uh, it also depends on what kind of puzzle I'm doing uh, when it comes to doing it myself. Um, word search is, because I'm placing everything in, in a certain spot, that takes a lot of time. Um, so, you know, those, those will probably, if I did an entire 50 page book, that could probably take me a couple days to, to knock out. And again, the downside to it compared to like, you know, no, no con regular no content books or low content books is I can't use that interior again because like I said before, I, I you know, I'll get a negative review. So um, that's why I use the generators. Now the generator that I use it, I mean, you still have to come up with words, you know, so whether it's, um, you know, whether you're doing a, a word scramble or crossword or word search you still have to you know do your niche research you still have to to um, find the words that you're going to put in there but once you've done it and depending on you know what your niche is and you know I mean I've gone into uh, you know with one of my activity books I did and there were uh, we did word searches and the software creates word searches really quickly um, you know but again you still find the words you know I just I went into Google and I Googled a certain phrase and pulled up a site and that gave me a lot of great ideas. Again, I didn't plagiarize it, but it gave me a lot of great ideas for words to include in my word search. And so once I created that text file for the word search, I mean, it, 
it takes me it takes me longer to create the cover than it takes me to actually do the interior when I use uh, the puzzle mastery gener generator. Um, so when I do that, I can probably knock out <clears throat> just including creating it, not not all the research. Because again, depending on what your niche is, that research is going to take you anywhere from five minutes to five days or five weeks. I don't know, depending on your niche. Um, but the, to actually generate it, it takes mere. 60 seconds, you know, because all I have to do is go in and say I want 20 of these puzzles, 10 of these puzzles, 20 of these, and then it generates the the actual uh, PDF file for me, and then I just put the interior, or I put the cover on it. So um, when I use the generator, creating it, the cover is what takes the longest. Um, I can usually knock out probably about 10 books in a day. So what I typically will do, um, this is kind of like a, a quick in the day of, uh, what I typically will do is I'll take one day out of the week and that's my research day. And I will research all the different niches that I'm interested in, as well as I'll research some additional ideas for niches. And I will come up with all the words that I need for uh, the word search, uh, the a word scramble, um, all, all the other different ones, crosswords, and uh, word, they've, got, they've got a word match where you have like, let's say, uh, state and city and people can just draw a line to which one. So they've got that. And so I will do all the research for that in one day and have all my files ready. And then when it comes time for me to generate it, I can generate, like I said, depending on how much research I've done on my research day, I can generate 10, 20 books a day for the rest of the week and, and have it all ready. Good question, Weatherly. Um, let's see, Ray. I'm the guy who was asking you about adding custom bullets to book descriptions. Still not sure sure where to insert the HTML for those things. Can you do a video actually showing where to put the HTML? Um, I actually did a little bit more research on this, uh, and and went back to the books that I did where I included the um, the HTML code for the different different bullet points and, and if you guys don't know what we're talking about I did a video a little while back where instead of having a regular bullet point in your description um, I show or I tell you um, there's ways to put like for example if you're doing one for fourth quarter if you're doing one for for winter you can do snowflakes instead of the actual bullet points it just makes it stand out more the the way the way to do that is take out the the li code and instead put in um, a break from the previous, at the end, so it's um, dash BR and then closing bracket, and then just include your code. So take out the LI code and just include the HTML for the particular bullet point you wanna put in there. Um, if, if that's not clear, let me know, Ray. I'll, I will do a video on that. It'll be really brief. It'll probably be a you know, two minute video because it's really quick. Um, but yeah, so just instead of having the, the LI and the, and the off LI, the slash LI at the end, um, then instead of those, you're going to have a break at the end and then the code at the beginning of the next line. So you'll still have the, the UL and the slash UL at the, at the beginning and the end of it because you're still doing a bulleted list, but you're replacing those bullets with these new symbols. I hope that makes sense. Um, what was the puzzle software I like? It the good question, Abigail. The puzzle the puzzle software that I use is called Puzzle Mastery, and uh, you can just go to kwheelerbooks.com/puzzles with an S at the end and uh, and check it out. Uh, like I said, it, it is an affiliate link, but you know I I use it daily. And um, I have, and he's always adding things to it. So, and that's a great thing about him being a programmer. Let's see. Um, Maze books kicks all kinds of butt last quarter. Uh, yes, it, I I knew you told me that, Kevin. Um, I didn't know how much you wanted me to 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 give away. So yes, puzzles did sell like crazy during fourth quarter last year, and I don't doubt it's going to be any different this year. Um, I mean, I, I think puzzle books in general, you know, 
are, are going to sell really well during fourth quarter. But yes, mazes are are extremely big sellers during fourth quarter. And, you know, like I said, if you don't want to do software, then, you know, you can, and you're not, I mean, you can either hand draw them. If you're good at that, I'm not, I can't even do stick figures. Um, but you can, you can do that or you can, you know, try to get a gig on, on Fiverr. I know there's plenty of them out there. Um, and just, just be mindful of the price. You know, you, you want to make sure that you, that you, still make a profit so if they do like i know one person had um i'd asked on fiverr to do a coloring book for me and the price was it was ridiculous i mean i'm sure it was worth it don't get me wrong i mean i i'm sure that because they were drawing it by hand absolutely worth the artwork but when it comes to my how many i'd have to sell to start making a profit just didn't make sense to me Um, let's see Okay, would love videos to show how. Um, G. Chataway, I, I assume you were, this is when you were talking about um, how to make these interiors um, yourself. I assume that's what you're talking about. Um, yeah, I mean, I like I said, I've done everything from tic-tac-toe boards and hangman to um, to uh, crosswords. And, and, and I do it all in PowerPoint. Uh, I'm sure there's other software that you can do it, and it'll probably you know be 10 times easier, but that's just what, I, what I'm familiar with, what I use. Um, Please show how I make them. Love demos. Oh, that just jumped a lot. Okay. <laughs> Self-publishing with Dale's in the house. Hey, Dale. Glad to see you here. Let's see. Oh, here. Kevin, great, great video idea. How to make a cover for puzzles. Um, because mine suck. Um, yeah, I can absolutely do, uh, do that kind of video. Um, I mean, and I, I do mine in Canva, so obviously it's, uh, you know, it, it's not, it's going to be free and it's not super complex, but yeah, yeah, I can, I can do that. Again, it's going to be, it's going to depend on your, your particular genre, but yeah, I can do a video on that. Um, let's see. Oh, looks like I skipped a couple. Let's see. Okay, they're uploading more designs. If I missed your question, um, like I said, throw it again, throw it in again. Um, you know, there's only one of me, and there's a lot of people in the house, so um, I'm excited to see it. Hey, if you like this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up. Um, question: Do you build a brand around a target audience or a topic for your puzzle books? Uh, great question, ladies. I'm sorry. I, I do, I do, um, and I do this with any of my my low content, no content. But when I find a niche that is selling, um, one thing that that uh, self publishing with Dale had told me a long time ago is double down on it, which I do, um, and and I create a brand around it. Um, I, I mean I don't do go as far as to websites or any of that other stuff or or even you know Facebook page, but I make sure that I, that I, I use a consistent brand name. Um, like I said, especially with puzzle books, I do a series, so that way they're all intertwined. Um, but yeah, if. I mean, I don't waste it on ones that aren't that aren't selling. But when I first go into a niche, if I think it's going to sell, which to be honest, if I didn't think it was going to sell, I probably wouldn't go into it. But um, if if I'm pretty sure it's going to sell, I will make sure that 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 brand is something that I can continue with, and then I will make different variations of it. Again, different um, you know different complexities, different. It, it could be the exact same book. And just different interior, but maybe even in the same pattern. So maybe I'll do one that's you know you know crosswords, and then Sudoku, and then um, uh, word search, and then I'll do another book that's in that same order. So so there's some kind of similarity from book to book to book. So people can can kind of ex- know what to expect. But of course, the interiors themselves are going to be completely different. Uh, Puzzle Maker Pro uh, have not. Um, I don't know if that's one of the ones I've tried. Uh, I, like I said, I've tried three or four. Uh, there were some good ones. Um, the Puzzle Mastery just happens to be the one that, that I think was the best fit for me, which which is that it was, um, like I said, really reasonably priced, um, fairly intuitive to use. 
Um, I do like the fact that if they're that that the creator is a programmer, so he takes suggestions, he takes you know any kind of um, I don't say changes, uh, criticisms, whatever you want to call it. He takes them to heart, and he can he can go in there and make the changes himself instead of him having to hire somebody else to do it. And of course, tech, typically, if someone has to hire someone else to make the changes, or they've got people overseas or whatever, that that price ends up coming back in the bottom line when it comes to pricing the product. So um, I I'll take a look at Puzzle Maker Pro and see if it's one that that I have tested out. Um, but like I said, out of the ones I found. Out of the three or four that I tested, the uh, the Puzzle Mastery is definitely the, the one that was the best fit for me. Uh, do I build a brand? Yes. Kevin, oh, you're talking about... Are you talking about merch? You want to max out? Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I, this goes back to me spreading myself out too thin. Um, I'm, I'm working on merch, uh, but I'm... and I, I mean, I'm only on Tier 100, so... It doesn't take long for me to max it out. Uh, I just, I haven't gotten around to it yet. Uh, I've put out, I can only put out 10 a day. And so like I'll basically do like 10 a week right now. But that should still be full by the time fourth quarter hits. So I should still be good. Um, let's see. Um, well, and I will say that, um, let's see. Ultimate Go Q4. Yeah, I mean, I would, when it, when it comes to these softwares, like I said, if you have time, I would suggest making, trying to make at least one interior, just pick one, whether it's a maze or, um, or a word search or something like that. Try to make it yourself. And I, I, obviously you don't even have to like make a whole book out of it or you know sell it or anything like that. Just try to make one page and see how much time it takes you and then check out the software and you'll you'll really get to appreciate how much time that that software saves you are children's educational activity books more seasonal or evergreen um good it's a good question sarah it, it depends it depends on the topic um obviously during uh when when back to school starts uh, they're gonna you know they're gonna pick up in sales Around the holidays, they'll probably pick up at sales as well. But the thing is, and it also depends on your the age group that you're aiming towards when it comes to educational. Uh, you know, if you're looking at preschool age kids or even younger, they they can buy those year round because they're still they're still learning. So the parents are always going to want something to to um, help them to grow, whether it's numbers or letters or whatever. Um, so, I mean, it, it can be evergreen or I, it's definitely evergreen, but as far as seasonal, you can make them seasonal by, um, by changing what the niche is, by changing, you know, what the cover is, you know, if you can do one that's for Christmas or one that's for, you know, Hanukkah or, or whatever holidays you want to do. But as far the problem with those are, is what I was saying before about making things specifically for Q4 is the chances of someone buying a Santa Claus activity book in May is probably lower than if you just did a general um, a general activity book for that same niche for that same age group. So, good question though. Uh, let's see, uh, ladies, I'm sorry you're hesitating between this one and the Simple Maze Crazy. Um, I. I don't know what this one you're talking about. If you're talking about the Puzzle Mastery or if you're talking about the other one that was suggested. Um, I know that Puzzle Mastery on one of the tiers does actually have mazes as well. Um, but uh, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. But yeah, I mean, just w when you're picking out one, regardless of which one you decide to use, make sure just like with any software, you do your due diligence. Um, ask around, you know, ask people... And, and get their honest experiences from it. You know, they don't have to tell you what their book was or anything like that or send you a link to it. You know, I mean, if they can, that's great. So you can actually see the quality. But um, the quality, I think, is pretty much going to be the same across the board. Um, but 
the uh, the the difference is is you want to make sure that that the customer service is on point so that way if you have questions you've got support there that aren't going to like just read their messages once a day or once a week uh, so you want to make sure that you've got the support make sure it's financially uh, it, it's money that just like with anything that you buy you want to make sure that you you're, you're willing to it's okay if you wait a while before you reap that benefit because obviously you can't guarantee how long it's going to take before your books start to sell because a lot of it does does have to do with the cover itself which is completely out of the realm of the software so the softwares may create the best interiors whatsoever but if your cover is not so great then you have it's going to take you longer to get sales to kind of uh, recoup that initial investment so you know just like I said ask around when it comes to any kind of software that you buy um, or, or whether it's a course or whatever always ask around and and find out what people's opinions of them are uh, let's see self-publishing uh, killer video uh, Dale I th I'm not quite sure what you're talking about when I said I have a killer video covering this topic um, I'm assuming you're probably going back to me talking about how to make the book description pop and yes I do um, but I, I guess I could have been a little more specific as far as like how to replace it um, so I can do a video on that I'm new to this in terms of actual publishing what is the production cost per book um, do you st whoop, that just jumped uh, Do you strictly go through sales like Amazon? Do you have physical copies? Try to market to bookstores. Um, okay, good question, Rachel. I, I actually covered the cost uh, earlier, um, at least for KDP. The printing cost, it's the same printing cost regardless of what type of book you do. It's black and white versus color. Um, if you go to kwheelerbooks.com slash cost, it'll bring you right to KDP's uh, uh, pricing system and it tells you how much it is you know if you get this many of pages and it's black and white how much it's going to cost to print so just again kwheelerbooks.com slash cost and you can check that out um, as far as where to go go everywhere go definitely go wide go go to Amazon I personally don't try to market it um, to like physical bookstores but I I have printed or had a couple copies sent to me um, when I'm doing my my doing my craft fair in the winter um, during fourth quarter you know one of my niches ties into one of my children's books and so obviously I'm gonna I'm gonna have those there as well for people to purchase so yeah you can buy them yourself the reason you know like I said if you go to find out what the printing cost is and that's all you're pretty much gonna pay as an author if you get an author copies and um, you can you can try to sell them you know at, at craft fairs trade shows depending on your niche whatever it can be um, but I like I said I don't bother trying to get those into physical bookstores I I am in physical bookstores with my my written books but for my puzzle books and stuff like that I don't bother with that there's just so many out there that and and to be honest you really can't compete I mean you can go to the dollar store and find you know activity books I can't compete with that type of person but that type of person is not the person that's going to be buying a book on Amazon you know those are people that are looking for really really great deals and um, though Amazon does have great deals obviously you know it, you can't compare it. you're not gonna make a profit when you try to you know have a dollar store sell your book so um, or even if you go to Walmart they're they're so low priced because they do in bulk you can't really compete with that so I don't bother with that but like I said uh, having some made up and, and printing them and selling them myself physically as well as being on different platforms uh, you can go you can try Lulu and and get uh, trying to get spiral bound versions uh, keep in mind that Lulu and I love Lulu um, they're actually Lulu is actually follows this channel um, uh, you know I love Lulu uh, if there was any suggestion I'd have for them if you're listening is uh, is try to get more trim sizes that's basic that's the biggest um, complaint I've heard 
is just they they just don't have as many trim sizes as um, as like KDP and places like that. Um, so yeah, but you absolutely try different ones. Okay, Ray. All right. So yeah, the, the way I explained it isn't clear. That's fine. I'll do a video on that. That's not a problem. Here, let me write that down. Okay, Lady Samsara, they do all sorts of forms. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Kevin, stocking stuffers, yes, yes. You know, as a parent, I like to, you know, I still like to get something for people to, something for my kids to read, something for them to physically do that's not on the old phone and, you know, Matter of fact, we actually have a game that we play for coloring, even though my kids are older, um, you know, where we'll, we'll have a coloring page and I'll decide what picture I'm going to color. And we all do this, but what, you know, like I'm a, if it's a picture of a person, I'm going to color their hair, but I don't tell them what I'm going to color. And then I have them just tell me a, a color. So I decide I'm going to do the hair and I say, all right, I made a decision. And then they tell me purple. So now this person has purple hair. And it's just really interesting to see what you're, it's it's just fun what your end uh, picture looks like, you know. Because I, I mean, we've done cats where the tail's a different color than the, you know, than the the regular fur, and it's it's really funny. So yeah, you know, stocking stuffers are great. Any kind of holiday present, um, well, you know, puzzle books will really sell really well. But um, again, they sell year round though. You know, every everything pretty much will sell at least a little during Q four. Um, Obviously, it's not a guarantee because I've got books that don't. But, but things that you don't normally sell may still sell during Q4. Um, but activity books and puzzle books, absolutely. Um, especially if you if you do your niche research and you're um, and and you dial it in, you you've got a really good shot of making good amount of money with uh, puzzle books. Let's see, Keith. I have to find a way better way for coloring books. Oh, you found a way better way. Okay, um, yeah, send yeah, send that to me, ladies. I'm sorry on uh, on Facebook. Um, Kevin, Kevin saying hey to self pub. Yeah, when Wednesdays are crazy. Um, uh, I I completely understand. Uh, Wednesdays are actually my my down day when it comes to the rest of the craziness. Um, it, it's it's the lull, and it was just the day that I, you know, it's in the middle of the week. I know usually things are a little bit slower for a lot of people, and so that's when I started doing the the pre-recorded, and just to stay consistent, I did the the live streams on uh, on Wednesdays. Now, if you guys think a different day would be help more helpful on the on for the live streams, like maybe on a Saturday, uh, like a Saturday morning, let me know in the comments, and you know maybe I'll do pre-recorded on Wednesdays and. Uh, live streams on Saturdays. We'll see. I, like I said, this is it, it wouldn't be YouTube without you. So this is your channel. I'm just the host. So um, you let me know what you guys are interested in and I will do my best. Okay. I'd like to know about the coloring book. Okay. Coloring book info. Um, trying to publish my first book. Congratulations. Um, yeah, your first book is, you know, it, it's kind of like your, I don't say, it's kind of like your first kid, you know, it's like, especially when you physically get it in your hand, it's amazing, but I'll be honest, I mean, I've published over 250 books, and and it doesn't matter what kind of book it is, when I get it in my hand, it's still kind of cool, um, it, it still gets me excited, and and there's, another thing, I, I see you say scared, um, just the biggest advice I can give to somebody who's just starting out is after you're confident in your book, publish it. Don't wait for it to be perfect, regardless of what type of book it is. Don't wait for it to be perfect because as as the creator, it'll never be perfect for you. And you know, the good thing about self-publishing is you you know, if if you find a typo, if you you know, if if you want to make a tweak, it's digital. You can just go in, update the file, and re-upload it. 
so it's it won't take years or months or anything like that so um so yeah just don't be afraid i i know it's it's nerve-wracking especially the you know first couple times publishing a book but all i can say is you can do it i will i truly believe that everybody from the age of seven to 107 has a book inside them at least one ready to be published and so just just do it you know um it, even if you don't believe in yourself, and that's one great thing about Dale, even if you don't believe in yourself, Dale believes enough in, in you for, for both of you, and, and so do I. So just just know that know that you can do it. Um, this whole community is behind you, and uh, can't wait to hear the success story that you have. Um, let's see. Weatherly, watching videos instead of working, I can identify. Um, yeah, I've actually I've actually greatly reduced the number of channels that I that I still have notifications turned on for. Um, which, by the way, make sure that when you, you when you subscribe, make sure you do turn on the notifications if you want to get alerted when I put out new videos. Um, because I, I looked at my analytics, and a lot of people may think that they have their bell icon turned on, but they're not. So you might want to double check that. Uh, YouTube has a has a way of you know undoing things from time to time um, are you using Amazon ads to get sales for your puzzle books and activity books or any of your low content no content books uh, yes and no for my puzzle books and my activity books no I am not I am I am focusing more on creating them right now um, and because of the niches I've selected they are selling so because I'm seeing sales I'm not worried so much about um, the doing running ads to them and because I do you know I am doing this part time I do have a limited budget that I that I have assigned for advertising um, I do have ads running on some of my low and no content books um, my I think I covered this in a previous video but my rationale it, it, it differs um, you know if I have a book that hasn't sold at all but I think it has a lot of potential it just it might be in a little bit more competitive market then then I will run some ads to it. Um, I will watch them like a hawk. And when I mean when I say that, I mean I'll check my stats at least once or twice a day and I'll do, run it for about a week. And just to get it seen above the crowd. And if I still don't see any sales, then I'll cut I'll kill that particular ad and I probably won't run any more ads to that book. I just move on to the next one. Um, also if I have ones that have been selling really well, and then maybe they start to dip a little bit. I may run some more ads to that. Uh, but again, I, I watch it like a hawk. Um, I, I'm very cognizant of the amount of money that I'm spending in relation to the amount of money I'm making. Because you have to keep in mind that when you're running ads, that you're not going to, with KDP, you're not going to see those sales royalties for another 60 days. Whereas when you're running the ads, they're going to take that money out at the end of the month. So, you know, there, you don't want to spend money that you can't afford to to be without that particular month because even if it kills it and it you know and it's got the greatest a cost whatsoever, if you don't have that money or you can't afford to lose that money that's been spent on the ad right then and there, then it doesn't do you any good. So um, I do run ads. I don't like I said I don't run them to my puzzle. I might when it gets closer to Q4 again just to make it stand out above the crowd. Um, but to some of my low and no content books, I do. Uh, let's see. Okay. Kevin McGuire, that's where that's where Lulu lost you. Their trim sizes don't match up with the most popular trims. Yeah, it's. I like I said, it's it's really one of the few complaints that I that I can make about Lulu and I wouldn't even say complaints one one of the areas of opportunity as we would say in business um, that I would say is and, and the funny thing is is Lulu's been around longer than anybody else they've been around for like over 90 years and so um, you know maybe the trim sizes they have were the popular ones back then but we you know it, we're not we're not in the, you know 90 years ago anymore we need to kind of if at all possible, at least add some. I'm not saying you have to have as many as what KDP has, but at least have the standard trim sizes, all the different standard trim sizes 
for all the different types of bindings would be great. Uh, so Kevin, you use you use Puzzle Mastery as well. Um, yeah, yeah, they they definitely have different, um, so many different uh, types of puzzles that they do. They even do something called uh, cryptograms, which I don't if you may or may not be familiar with what cryptograms are, but basically, um, you give them an entire sentence or whatever, and the software will replace all of the letters. And then they'll have a hint at the bottom or on a different page of what one letter or one or two letters may equal or what they equal. And to kind of give a little hint and help people figure out the, uh, the particular, what the original sentence was. And uh, these are really popular in like uh, newspapers and stuff like that. But yeah, they, that, uh, the Puzzle Mastery does those as well. And uh, I have a couple cryptogram books out that are doing pretty well. Um, yes, Abigail, definitely need more uh, option sizes. Uh, let's see. This day and time is great for you. All right, Kevin, good to hear. Done is better than perfect. Well said, Kelly. Well said. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> there's a yeah, there's a shirt for you. Done is better than perfect. see thank you so much for responding to my question I'm glad it was helpful great chat see you guys later see you later Kelly published if you guys haven't checked out Kelly published go check out her channel um, she does she covers merch but she also covers a lot on no content low content books um, so yeah absolutely great great complimentary channel um, between her and and Dale so and uh, yeah definitely check those guys out um, if there are no more questions, um, then let's see. I think I answered everybody. If you have a question and I missed it, drop it in the chat. Um, like I said, it, you know, after this, you can throw it in the comments. Uh, I check the comments on a regular basis. Uh, when I say regular, almost, almost like on the hourly, because uh, I get alerted every time they come through. You know, that's the joys of having one of these bad boys in your hand all the time. Um, I think cryptograms will be what I start on first after merch. I have a few coloring book ideas too. Uh, yes, yes. Um, yeah, cryptograms, like I said, you know, again, find a niche. You know, it's all about finding those words. The, whether a cryptogram is going to be, a, you know, sentences, um, you know, word searches, word matches, word scrambles, all those. Those are all, you know, one or two words. And, you know, finding your niche, finding what those words are going to be, that's the most time consuming part um, if, if you're using a generator. You know, if you're making them yourself, it's it's just time consuming, uh, but it can be done. So, uh, again, if you you know if you if you're thinking about getting into this and you have time, I would suggest trying to make just one cryptogram, whatever Sudoku puzzle, whatever, making it yourself, and see how much time and time yourself. See how much time it takes you, and then ask yourself how much money is that time worth. And so, like I said, puzzle mastery, the the uh, first level is $27 and you get like word searches and, and I think word matches, those kind of things. Um, I don't know. You can check out, like I said, kwheelerbooks.com slash puzzles and it tells you what everything that you get in that one. And it's 27 bucks. So ask yourself what, you know, how much is that time worth? And, you know, if you've got free time, go for it. You know, it's, it, it gives you more of a profit because you don't have that initial uh, startup cost of the, of the, it's not a course of the system. Um, but absolutely, uh, one more thing that, that I like about, like I said, because he's a programmer, one of the suggestions that people had made is, um, to be able to change the different, uh, page sizes. And because he's a programmer, he went in there and made some changes to where now you can control the page size that it's going to be in for your final book. So again, um, Weatherly, yep. I'm, thank you so much for joining us. If you have any questions, like I said, throw them in the comments. Thank you guys for being here. Um, until next time, I'm Keith Wheeler, and remember to write right.